Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kieran Mack, and thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like this video if you're watching us on YouTube, and please do subscribe. We are also available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and a host of other podcast players. Now that that's all done, let's jump into today's show. Well, hello there and welcome back to the Thai Expat Daily Show. Today is Wednesday, the 2nd of March, 2022, and we will start off with the nationwide daily COVID report. The country registered 20,420 new cases of COVID-19 during the previous 24 hours, the Public Health Ministry announced on Tuesday morning, the third consecutive day of declines. 43 more coronavirus-related fatalities were recorded. New cases have declined by about 20% from the 25,615 posted last Friday. On Monday morning, authorities announced 22,311 new cases and 42 fatalities. Now, the Phuket Health Office reported 742 confirmed cases and 373 probable cases on the island. Out of the confirmed cases, 634 are local and 108 are from abroad. There were no deaths and there are now 6,977 people in care in Phuket. Chambari Public Health Office reported 1,197 new confirmed cases with nearly 1,749 probable cases and no deaths. Most confirmed cases were in Chambari, 234, 352 cases in Sirasha, and 268 cases in Pattaya, Banglamung. There are 24,125 patients in care in Chambari. The daily number of new COVID-19 infections will remain high for at least two to six weeks before they begin to stabilize and then decrease according to the Public Health Ministry. The Public Health Permanent Secretary, Dr. Kitty Boom Von Kretschit, explained that the increase in new COVID-19 cases in all parts of Thailand also means an increase in patients with pneumonia in those who require ventilators and deaths. Most of the fatalities are still among the elderly, those with underlying diseases and the unvaccinated. He predicted that there will be 1,000 patients developing pneumonia and about 4 to 500 patients on ventilators. The numbers are, however, lower than the Delta outbreak, during which up to 7,000 patients experienced pneumonia and 1,300 patients were on ventilators. Currently, 59% of all hospital beds are occupied. Most of them are being used to accommodate mild and asymptomatic cases, while hospital beds for moderate and severe cases are only 20% occupied. As for Favi Prabir, 16.9 million tablets are currently in stock for March and April, while the government pharmaceutical organization can still produce 63.8 million more tablets and procure more, which will bring the total to 87.6 million tablets. Meanwhile, Director General of the Disease Control Department, Dr. Opart, said that Omicron is currently the dominant COVID-19 variant in Thailand. He explained that in Europe and the United States, they saw a big increase in Omicron cases for one to two months, but they eventually decreased. Therefore, it is expected that Thailand will see higher COVID-19 figures for the next two to six weeks. Dr. Opart also recommended these three measures to protect against COVID-19. First, vaccination, particularly with booster shots, as it will help reduce the number of severe cases and deaths. Secondly, personal prevention, such as wearing face masks, washing hands frequently, maintaining a distance from others and avoiding crowded areas. And finally, if you've been in close contact with a COVID-19 infected person, self-isolate for seven days, test yourself with rapid antigen tests on the fifth or sixth day. If you test negative, you can go outside, but should avoid meeting others, going to public places and using public transport for another three days. So that is the current situation in Thailand and the outlook for the next two to six weeks, as the public health ministry seem to be predicting. It's all fine coming up with these rules and regulations, and in particular, this third idea that you must self-isolate if you're a high-risk contact. Well, that is all fine if you have the money to do it. But the government are not helping people with salaries during this period. They're offering a very small minimum amount for people who have jobs who have to go and then self-isolate. Employers now, according to the Labour Department, do not have to give sick leave for these periods and the SSO will contribute, a, as I said, a small fraction up to a certain amount of money for people who have to self-isolate. That's, of course, for people who have paid into the Social Security Fund. If you haven't, you're getting nothing. So yes, people, I'm sure, would like to do the right thing. But if you don't have that safety net to fall on, then why would you be self-isolating? 
Now, the majority of places I know are just simply testing and moving on if you're high risk contact. They are not self isolating because, at the end of the day, aren't we being told that we need to learn to live with the virus? And yet again, this is not living with the virus if you used to start self isolating for seven days because you were a close contact with somebody who had the disease. This is still going on here in Thailand. For all their talk about endemic and moving on with things, it certainly doesn't look that way from where I'm sitting and where a lot of other people are sitting as well. I'm hoping we're going to see a change in the mentality in this country in the coming weeks, but you know, I just don't or won't hold my breath for it. The problem with declaring COVID endemic and moving on and learning to live with it is the government have spent the last two and a half years peddling fear to the public. And that fear now is ingrained in people. People are fearful of COVID. When they hear the word, they're fearful of it. And in order to become endemic, to be able to, to actually live with the virus and get on with our lives, such as things you see on TV in Europe. For example, I was watching the League Cup final in Wembley Stadium the last day, 85,000 people at a football match and not one person with a mask on. Now, I think to myself, when will Thailand ever get to that? And I genuinely have to say, I don't know, because the more I see the public policy from the government, the more I wonder if they actually want to get back to something like that. I truly hope that their words are real and their plan is to move forward, get us back to a normal life like many people around the world are now living. I think there are too many people who have been living in poverty for the last two, two and a half years. And it's time those people start to have some light at the end of the tunnel in terms of being able to earn a living and start to see their lives get better again. And I hope the government, I pray the government, are focused on that and getting the economy, general life, back to that reasonable normal that we were all used to before. And moving along, Ukraine fallout worries cabinet. The government is expected to introduce economic measures to mitigate the fallout from Russia's invasion of Ukraine, especially its impact on global energy prices, after the cabinet met later on Tuesday. Prime Minister Prayat Chanacha called a meeting with his deputies and relevant agencies to discuss the ongoing developments in Ukraine as tensions continue to escalate. Government spokesman Tanakorn Wambukanchana said on Monday, the crisis, he said, will undoubtedly have an impact on the economy, which will range from higher oil prices to volatilities in the equity and cryptocurrency markets. Thailand's economy will be hurt if the crisis drags on, he said. Deputy Prime Minister and the Energy Minister said the government is closely monitoring the situation. Although Thailand's energy imports are not directly affected by the crisis, he said, the government will boost the nation's fuel stocks to minimize the conflict impact on the public. Deputy Prime Minister and the Foreign Minister, Don Prambun Wenai, said General Pryat has instructed agencies concerned to prepare measures to cushion any potential impact from the Ukraine crisis. The price of energy, the stock market, currency exchange, trade and investments are among issues the Prime Minister touched on and urged authorities concerned to make comprehensive plans for in case the crisis escalates further, he said. Mr. Don also said the government welcomed the news that Ukraine and Russia have agreed to hold talks before adding Thailand will provide humanitarian assistance to those affected by the conflict. International politics is complicated and we can't take it at face value. We hope that the international community will cooperate seriously to resolve this conflict and have it contained, Mr. Don said. Deputy Prime Minister and the Public Health Minister Anathan Sharvakul said the Prime Minister had instructed all agencies to be prepared and that the Cabinet will on Tuesday discuss Ukraine's Russia crisis. He said while Thailand can largely depend on itself when it comes to consumer goods, the crisis may still affect the export sector as payments will be difficult to make when the sanctions kick in. The Finance Minister said the Ministry will hold talks with Bank of Thailand about potential impacts the Ukraine crisis will have on the country's economy. He said that talks will focus on the US and its key allies' decision to remove Russian banks from the SWIFT financial messaging system, essentially barring them from international transactions. We're closely monitoring the situation and assessing how it will affect the tourism and export sectors, he said. So there you have it. Thailand's concern is mainly about tourism. That's why they have not condemned Russia's invasion of Ukraine as of yet. That's why they are still whining and dining the Russian ambassador down in Phuket while they're still talking about twinning Phuket with a city in Russia from July onwards and all these different things. 
Yesterday, we had a number of ambassadors from the various embassies located in Bangkok came out and were very firm in their condemnation of Russia invading Ukraine. And they have also said that Thailand has been far too quiet in relation to this. Now, I think most of us understand why, because they don't want to be taking sides Russia over Ukraine or Ukraine over Russia, because they are very concerned about their tourism industry, because the number one tourist sector that's coming to Thailand, and in particular Phuket, is the Russian market. And that is the main reason they don't want to upset anyone. Thailand's viewpoint is let's stay quiet. It doesn't matter what atrocities are committed in Ukraine, what war crimes are committed. We'll stay quiet and we won't risk offending the Russians in any way that we can because we need their tourism. And that is the main focus for the Thai government at the moment and for the tourism authority of Thailand. Now, as many of you will know, the new test and go Thailand pass minus the fifth day PCR and hotel stay came into effect uh, on March 1st and uh, hotels and hospitals have been urged to give travelers refunds. All 2,157 hotels and their partner hospitals or COVID-19 test centers have been asked to voluntarily refund the second RT-PCR test and room booking on the fifth day to tourists or convert it into credits as the government insisted that it will not mandate operators to pay back those advance payments. Meanwhile, the government pledged not to make any immediate changes that will add more burden to the private sector when relaxing travel rules in the future. The Deputy Governor for Marketing Communication at the Tourism Authority of Thailand said 77,851 registrants from last month would be affected as they already paid for the second test and room required under the previous rule that expired yesterday. However, the actual number of those who can travel might be around 40,000. Of this amount, around 20 to 30% are locals who would definitely ask for refunds for both the cost of the room and RT-PCR tests as they have permanent residence. He said the remainder are international tourists who may need to cancel just the COVID test but keep the room on the fifth day if they remain with the same travel plan. Hotels should negotiate with partner hospitals or COVID-19 test centers to refund the test fee of around 2,000 baht to tourists in order to maintain positive tourism sentiment. Last week, hotels that already received payment from tourists and confirmed their bookings for the Thailand Pass, Hotel and Swap system were confused as the Royal Gazette on the new entry rules, starting from Monday, hasn't mandated them to refund the expense on the fifth day to tourists. Some hotels said that without a legal order from the government, their cancellation policy cannot allow such a refund. The Tourism and Sports Minister will issue an announcement asking cooperation from hotels to refund the fifth day expense to their guests. This rule is definitely not mandatory. Hotels are encouraged to manage those bookings according to their own cancellation policy. If refund is not possible, they should consider converting payments into credits or vouchers for in-house services or restaurants, he said. From Monday, those hotels who received room plus RT-PCR test bookings on the arrival date should also prepare antigen test kits as a complement to guests for the self-test on the fifth day. They should help tourists to download the More China app to report the result to the system. Speaking at an online meeting with the private sector yesterday, Mr. Siri Pakorn said some provinces such as Phuket, Panyang, Krabi that have a central RT-PCR payment system are ready to refund tourists and will also offer ATKs for the fifth test. A number of hotels joining the forum commented that such a decision created an extra burden for hotels in particular as they have to handle losses from additional operational costs they already prepared. Mr. Siri Pakorn said the government acknowledged these problems and will address these issues more carefully when more rules are relaxed in April. Removing the fifth test is the decision we gathered from the private sector. It might be cumbersome for hotels during the first few weeks of March, but in the long run, the ease of travel will benefit the whole industry, said Mr. Siri Pakorn. He said Thailand will continue easing more travel rules after the Centre for COVID-19 Situation Administration recently approved tourists to take dedicated domestic flights to provinces, which means that they are not bound to just take a direct flight and being restricted to a five-hour destination from the airport. Tourists can now take the connecting flight from the port of arrival under a sealed route to their destination to pass immigration and then take an RT-PCR test in the province, which is their final destination. So a little bit of nonsense from the hotels there. Look, if you have a cancellation policy and then you're saying, well, if our cancellation policy doesn't permit us to give a refund, then we can't do it. 
What a load of nonsense. You made the policy off. The policy is only writing, so you can change it whenever you want. I can have a policy to sit today to say I don't allow refunds, but if I decide I'm gonna give a refund, I simply can do it. This is just people trying to make a money grab because the whole system was changed after a month. Now also blame the government a little bit here. They seem to be bringing in rules so quickly that by the time the hotels get up and going and kind of caught up in the rule, they're already changing it to something else. And it is causing a lot of confusion around hoteliers. They brought back the test and go in February 1. They created a whole new system and a back office for hotels. And then March 1st, four weeks later, by the time the hoteliers had learned how to use the new system, they've changed it again. And yes, this does cause confusion, but it doesn't take away from the fact that hoteliers can easily refund money that they have been paid. Now, if they've decided to spend that money on something else, that's their decision, but they owe that money back to the potential client or guest. Now, as they said, the refund for the PCR tests in Phuket is very simple. There's a system, Thailand PSAS, you go onto it and you click refund and it does it automatically. And you wait maybe two weeks. I'm not sure the length of time, but it's a very easy system. And as, as it's run by the government, you will get your money back. I don't know what's going on in Bangkok. There's so many private hospitals involved, so many hotels. It just seems a little bit of a mess and probably a lot harder to get money back from these places. But at the end of the day, the government have canceled the fifth day and to be honest, it should have been put into the Royal Gazette that every hotel has to refund the test and the hotel stay night automatically. Should have been mandated. Of course, they didn't do that. And now some hotels are trying to get away without doing it by showing the cancellation policy, which they wrote, which doesn't really matter at all. But there you go. As far as I'm concerned, pay up, guys. You took the money from the people. If it's all being changed, you give the money back to them. And that's how I see it. I wonder how you see it. I presume most of you would agree with me that you've taken the money. You need to refund it now. And speeding along. MP questions submarine purchase from China. Says it will be delivered without an engine. A MP from the Putai party claims that the submarine that the government recently bought from China will be delivered without an engine after issues with a German supplier. The MP and also the Putai party leader is criticizing the 12.42 billion baht submarine purchase from a Chinese firm saying the deal lacked transparency. Yutapong said the submarine, which is scheduled to be delivered next year, should at least be included with an engine. He also questioned the credibility of the Chinese specialists who were expected to take control of submarine pier construction because they were registered with Thailand's Ministry of Labor as Chinese language teachers. The work for the construction of the pier would likely not be on the list of approved jobs for foreigners in Thailand, hence the rather odd designation. Also, there is no progress on the construction, even though they have received 15% of the budget. Early reports said that the German supplier would not sell a submarine engine to the Chinese firm because it would be used in a submarine that would later be sold to another country. Well, there you go. I, I have no idea what to make of that story, but if you'd like to comment down below in the section, I would love to hear what you think about all of this. And next up, Thai Airways registers operating loss of 19.7 billion for last year. Thai Airways International posted a 55.11 billion baht net profit last year on 81.52 billion baht in revenue from one-time transactions, mainly asset sales, and a 19.7 billion baht operating loss. The airline said last year's operating loss was down 44% from the previous year, but revenues from operations fell by 51% from 2020 to 23.7 billion baht. Income from passengers and cargo decreased by 59.9% to 24.6 billion baht. Operating expenses were at 43.45 billion baht, down about 48%. Apart from asset sales, the 81.52 billion baht in revenue from one-time transactions included income from debt restructuring, the sale of investments and restructuring and downsizing. As of December 31st, the airline and its subsidiaries had assets of 161 billion baht, down 23% from a year earlier. Its accumulated debt was 234 billion baht, down by 31%. 
Worldwide pressure on airline profitability diminished in the last quarter of last year, with the improvement expected to continue this year, according to a business confidence survey of airlines, chief financial officers and heads of cargo conducted by the International Air Transport Association, and that's the IATA. However, the respondents were more cautious than in the previous survey due to the Omicron impact, soaring jet fuel prices and rising market competition that puts pressure on yields. A majority of survey participants reported improving passenger and cargo volumes in the last quarter of 2021 versus the same period of 2020. They also expect this trend to continue in the future, notably on the passenger side of the business. The survey results suggest no significant change in employment levels in the last quarter of 2021 versus the same period a year ago. Now, on a positive note, 59% of respondents expect increased hiring in the next 12 months thanks to recovering passenger operations. Also, 55% of the survey participants recorded higher input costs in the last quarter year-on-year, largely due to soaring jet fuel prices and staff shortages. The same share of respondents expected further input costs increase in the future. Two-thirds of airlines in the survey predict that passenger yields will stabilize at current levels or fall due to increased competition in the market. And finally, the Phuket News Daily Report. Vashira Hospital offering walk-in jabs throughout March. Vashira Phuket Hospital has announced a schedule for March for providing walk-in COVID-19 vaccination injections of Sinovac and AstraZeneca for people requiring their first, second, third or fourth vaccination jabs. Now just to add to that, for people in Phuket, there is a vaccination centre now open in Central Floresta and they currently have Pfizer and Moderna there at present. Meth continues to spread, says Phuket Vice Governor. Phuket Vice Governor has warned of the continual spread of the drug methamphetamine and urged officials island-wide to do everything possible to eliminate it from society. BDMS refuses payment from Russian, Ukrainian insurance companies. Major Thai medical service provider BDMS has announced that its three main hospitals in Phuket have suspended accepting medical payment coverage from Russian and Ukrainian insurance companies. And finally, Ukrainians Russians in Phuket call out for peace. Ukrainian and Russians in Phuket gathered in front of the Russian consulate for Phuket to protest the invasion of Russian forces into Ukraine and to call for an end to the war. But ultimately, with this story or anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Because yes, this is a new show, but it's also a conversation. Now keep that conversation going. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and do all the good stuff that does help that YouTube algorithm. But ultimately, my name is Kieran Mack. You've been listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show, and we will see you next time.